growing up in a Christian family, it was wonderful, but it was also instilled with so much fear. You can't be doing that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you know? Pastor Misha always talks about BKs. <laughs> As a pastor's kid, you're supposed to be the role model. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. I know because I got kids and I know how I hold them there. This is what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. The Bible says, Call unto me. In very rare situation in the Bible, do you see such a call? Uh, the Lord uh, requesting, pleading pretty much, say, Call unto me, come uh, to me. And most of the time when we are running away and things are very difficult, it's very natural for us to be to want to be far away from Him. Uh, it's a nature of man. When Adam and Eve uh, had, had, had committed their, their, their first separation and sin, uh, when the Lord came in the evening uh, to a fellowship with them, they had run away. They were far away. God is looking and chasing after them. Right? It's very natural for us when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel we are not in the right path. It's very natural for us to kind of want to run away. But there's always a plea from God, almost like a mother calling uh, the, 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 the kid back and say, come unto me and I will answer you. That, that's, a, that's a plea from God. And I will not only answer you, he says that I will show you great and mighty things which you knowest not. We are very limited as humans on what we know. But the Lord is saying, I formed you in your mother's womb. There's nothing in you that's hidden from you. David one time said, where can I go and hide from your presence? If I go in hell, there you are. If I make my bed, in the, there you are. There's nowhere you can go and hide in the presence of God. Now, when we are going through difficult times, for instance, when you're going through addictions, we are struggling with areas of weaknesses. Most of the time we want to uh, we want to uh, we want to run away, we want to be isolated, we want to be by ourselves. But this day the Lord reminds us that even in your weakness, whatever it is, you can take it to the Lord in prayer. You can never be far away from God. There is always that open plea from God. Come to me, I will show you things that you have never saw, including uh, bringing you back from that area of dependency, drugs, addiction, or whatever it is. Even if it's your family member, there is always that play that we can come to the Lord. It's the best place we can fall to. One time David said, I'd rather spend a moment in your house because I'm safe there than anywhere else. So there's that invitation today. And prayerfully, as we continue hearing testimonies of recovering and hearing what the Lord has done to us, it's an eye-opener that if the Lord has done uh, to other people, He's able to do it to you, He's able to do it to your family member, He's able to do it to that colleague, He's able to heal, He's able to change your life, because if He's done it to others, He can do it to you. So it starts from a place of invitation. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, Knock into the door and I will open. Call and I will answer. There's that plea that the Lord would want to uh, have an interaction and a fellowship with us. So I invite you all to EMTV tonight, uh, whatever hour you are watching, and join us as we go through this path. Now, as we always start, uh, on my left, I've always had Dr. Mish, Pastor Mish as well, <laughs> uh, with me here today. Uh, are you going to say hello? At least now you're familiar to most of our members here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are excited to be here, Dr. Mishi, as will be here. Stay with us so that you can learn more. And like what Pastor David is saying, you know what? Jesus had an invitation. He says, come to me, those who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Amen. God is going to give us rest. Don't get despair because God is about to do something. Miracle is coming away. Even if you have gone through that, please, just uh, Jesus is the way. Thank you, Pastor Mish and Doctor. And on my extreme right, <laughs> for the first time, yes. uh, we are having Kate, and I will give a chance to introduce herself. Um, so thank you, viewers, for watching. My name is Catherine Njoku, but I go by the name Kate. I am born again, and I love the Lord. Um, and I'm really grateful for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it's 
always a pleasure when you're called upon to talk about what the Lord has done in your life because Amen. it is only by His power, not by my might, not, not by anything that I could possibly do. So I'm really grateful to be here and I hope that whatever I talk about will touch your life and probably change you and allow the Lord to use you. So thank you so much. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Kate, for joining us here. <laughs> it's always a very cold seat. It's very warm. <laughs> we try to make it very warm and very relaxing. <laughs> and also good to hear that uh, you're strong in faith. Uh, you don't see that much in our recent times because the storms of life are real. <laughs> They're ups and downs. But again, as we come here, it's a place where we're able to show our wounds. It's a place where we are vulnerable is a place where we are able to show our past and all that with hope that we are able to build each other. So talk to me about your journey, <laughs> Kate, and uh, your journey in salvation. Uh, when, when did you meet the Lord and uh, when did that journey start? Um, so I grew up in a Christian family. My mom and dad were actively in church. Uh -huh. uh, my dad was even a pastor. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> That's yes, good. he was. Um, but that was salvation through my parents for the right. longest time. But I remember the very, very first time I received Christ was on 23rd of February. I have a very good sense of dates, so I will be mentioning a lot of dates. Okay. Um, on 23rd of February, I was doing my KCPE, but it was before that, and there was a preaching, and I really wanted God for myself, wanted it to be personal. So that was the very, very first time that I received Christ. Right. Yeah. But all along in my Christian faith, I've always been active in church, served in Sunday school, in high, both primary and high school. I was part of the CU community, always have been, loved it. And I think that really kept me grounded in Christ. When you're, when you're serving, it's so hard to mess up. That's right. You can't That's afford right. to mess up. <laughs> so that really gave me a covering for my whole time, uh, high school and below. Everybody who knows me just always knew me as the CU girl, <laughs> which I love, but I now look at it. So It's a good label though. It, it is. So tell me, see, uh, when we started here, we had a conversation with some young adults, right? And one of the biggest things we realized then was, especially growing in a home where values are not devout and also absent parent was a very key contributor to some of the young adults then to start waging and finding other ways right and we know that still is so to you how was it helpful and different for you to have and you say your father was a pastor mm -hmm. and a Christian family would believe you're having fellowships you're having a Christian foundation and values and all that how helpful was that in shaping your, your, your personal salvation was very helpful but now for me I have to say I had a lot of fear as well the growing up in a Christian family it was wonderful but it was also instilled with so much fear you can't be doing that <laughs> no way <laughs> you know Pastor Misha always talks about PKs. <laughs> As a pastor's kid, you're supposed to be the role model. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I know because I got kids and I know how I hold them there. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. yeah. So there was a lot of perfection and I feel like I held on to the fear because if I'm really honest, I didn't I don't feel like I really held on to Christ. It would right. have been totally different. I held on to the fear and the pressure. Right. I was not about to disappoint anyone, so I was gonna be a perfect child all through. And I held on to that. That really covered me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I know we come from a shame honor community. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a culture where uh, there's an expectation, especially for a pastor and a pastor's kids and a pastor's family. There's always an expectation yeah. of how a pastor should behave, of how a pastor's wife should behave, how a pastor's kids should behave. Yeah. And it's going to be overwhelming, especially for the yeah. children, right? Because now there's a particular way they're supposed to talk and carry themselves and dress and be around. And I can imagine that would be a very significant pressure on your end now. And what I would also worry there is, and I know you pointed out, where you're now owning a salvation not for you. Because of where you're at, you just have to be saved because you're coming from a Christian family, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me also mention that now that I'm, you asked that question the second time, I realized... You know, growing up, 
people will really put uh, salvation in brackets. There was like stages. This is the one for your parents. This is the one that is personal. This is the one. You know? I've never heard about that. Okay, <laughs> where I grew up, there was a lot of that. Uh-huh. And so I kept hearing everybody say, "I'm now saved, not from my parents. I'm now right. saved." And I felt like I needed to get there. I needed to be saved, not from my parents, not because my mom says they're saved. So I was like, okay, today has to be the day. And I got because I really didn't understand what it meant to be personal with God. I just thought it was now. I'm not saying I'm saved through my parents. I thought it was just that. So when did that happen? What what was that trigger that now made you realize? Oh wait a minute! All this long I've been holding on to Christ because of my parents, but now uh, I really need to stand on my own feet. When did that transition happen? Or what happened? I think I just wanted to let go of my mom. Like <laughs> it's not about you. Right. It's now about me. I think that was just my thing because now you know my mom. My mom has been. My mom is one of the most wonderful human beings I've met in this life. She has really held on to Christ with everything she has. Um, so I've seen that a lot. But now every example that I went through in life, I will relate it back to my mom. My mom actually told me the Bible. My mom actually so I wanted to let go of my mom and now be the one who read it, be the one who found it out. So that's what clicked that I needed salvation afresh. Right. Yeah. I, and that's really good to have a role model. And I don't know, Pastor, you've really talked much about that. That uh, you, 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 and this, the Bible says in Proverbs, you, you teach your kids the ways of the Lord, and when they grow, they will not depart from them. And I know you've been a very vocal about uh, creating godly environment uh, in home, and you, 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 you hear that especially a mom becomes a role model at home. So, how, how important is that for parents? That is very, very important, honestly speaking, and uh, we have to accept that. Even when we put pressure on you, PKs, pastors, kids, it's not that we don't love you. We really, because we have been there before you. And we understand the world as it is. Now, um, it is very, very important as parents that even if when our kids grows and feel that we have put a lot of pressure, we should continue to role model them, tell them about God. That is very, very important. By the time you realize that the salvation is not for your mother or for your papa, now this is my salvation for Christ. Right. So it is very important, Kate, because I guess that you have kids that also, or if you, even if you don't have baby, <laughs> you're going to have them. So instill that to them so that when they grow up, even if because prayers of life can make them to, you know, to sway somehow. But they will always remember the fear of the Lord that has been taught taught to them by their parents. So I want to say to all the parents out there, Christian parents in particular, please don't give up on your children. Teach them the ways of the Lord so that when they grow, they can remember those teachings. Amen. Viewers will be right back uh, in a few minutes uh, as we continue with Kate here. Uh, digging more deep into where she started and where she's at. <laughs> See you back in a few minutes.
Welcome back. Uh, we are excited to be here again with Kate and Dr. Mish <laughs> talking about the processes and the journey that Kate has gone through as a pastor's kid, uh, finding her identity, her voice, and uh, the challenges and storms. And you know that can go two ways, by the way. Uh, uh, th th that pressure and that expectation yes. uh, has a possibility of making the outcome of what we are seeing here in Kate, yeah. where now she wants to take ownership of the process. Mm -hmm. Now she's not living for Christ on behalf of her mother, but she's holding on to that. Mm -hmm. But it can also lead into rebellion at the yeah. same time. So there's mm -hmm. a possibility yes. <laughs> of the same at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Right, where now someone says, this is not me. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing it for my parents. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I have nothing to do with it. And they far, they run as far as much as possible far away, from, away God. from God. But again, that's still not a problem because yeah. uh, what that means, and I, th I really like the way you said, mm -hmm. when they go away, it's not that they don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. They already have a sense mm -hmm. of who God is. So mm -hmm. even when they're running away, mm -hmm. constantly the voice of their mother and parents mm -hmm. will still ring in their bed. Mm -hmm and their heads and God has a way yeah. of bringing them back and I'm glad you turned out mm -hmm. <laughs> the same way yeah. so uh, being raised in a home is, is really critical and creating that time especially as parent is very very critical I know we get very busy uh, with our work with our schedules and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but having that family time really shapes and I'm glad that you're bringing in that up here yeah. that um, and especially in this country I've always said we get busy we are working eight hours yeah. we're working shifts <laughs> and especially people from my own community yeah. when we come here we are always trying to make up for all the wasted what resources <laughs> so we, 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 we are looking out for that farm we need to buy back home we are looking out for the investment mm. we had mm. and all that come at an expense it come, i mean you cannot have it all yeah. so you are busy working shifts and doubles which is a good thing but if that balance is not created you can never leave that vacuum there mm. so the, it's still very important for us especially uh, the, them that are coming here as first generation Americans. It's very careful to create that balance. While you're still pushing out for other priorities back home, remember, your highest priority are your children. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking out for, may, may, they may not even desire for what you're building up. Mm -hmm. Just seek out what your priorities quality are. Time. Quality time with quality your family time with is important. Yeah. And I know right now we are talking about children and all that, mm -hmm. but it's also going to marriages. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't invest in it, you start seeing cracks, but that's a topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's focus on Kate here. So you are born again, you love the Lord, mm -hmm. and uh, you, are, you, are, you are CU mm -hmm. uh, member. Yes. So take us through what happens after that. I have to mention that as much as I was CU, I was going through terrible anxiety. Okay. I was, and the bad thing is, you know, mental health isn't a thing in Kenya, yeah. if I'm really being honest. Mm -hmm. So every time I would go to hospital, it will just be, she's pretending. It's something different. They don't have a yeah. name for it. Yeah. So I never really got to understand what was happening to me, yet I felt it. It was so real to me, wow. you know, but nobody else saw it. Nobody else named it. It mm -hmm. was just something that kept happening. I even got to a point, I called it <clears throat> blank pain because it just came from nowhere i never understood wow. it so that really does if affect my life going forward wow. so even being in cu people will keep uh, I, I was a and, and, and that's still very young so yeah how old are you when you are starting to have mental issues oh when i was 12. Oh, wow. but i have to say it will, my upbringing i went through things that i shouldn't had gone through mm -hmm. um so that really and my body was trying to fight it for a long time right. and it was a constant battle of trying to come up and me shutting it down and even not knowing what was going on mm. because the body is still trying to protect me mm. and so you fighting went, against a nose yes yes so it went for long and i got to po points where now i remember the very first time i had the anxiety was i was in class and i imagined something in my head mm. i was i imagined someone under a ladder and a stone Threw, uh, thrown on top of their head mm -hmm. and I squinted and I went down and I was shaking. I felt like the stone had hit me. Wow. And uh, people started thinking, this girl is mad. She yeah. has a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I kept feeling it. Like I felt like, oh, there's something. And I now I started convulsing a lot and it now started happening more frequently. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Wow. Mm-hmm. I know mental health are there and uh, maybe our next episode will be talking about uh, mental health because and anxiety because it's a really big issue in our community. Mm. But uh, what surprises me is at the age of 12, yeah. uh, that's pretty early on. And uh, mm. from where we come from, they don't even have a name for it. Mm. Leave alone knowing <laughs> that's even an issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big thing. Mm-hmm. So now you have to deal with it. And uh, you can't yeah. share that with anybody else because they don't even know what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And they want to understand it. And every time I'm being sent back home, my mom is thinking, you, you're wasting my school fees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe maybe she will just go get married, you know, just being an African parent, right, you know. Right. Like, I don't understand what is happening to you, but mm. you're really overreacting now. Mm. But honestly, it had nothing to do with me, mom. Mm. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. just a condition that they didn't know existed at yes. that time. Mm. I actually came to know what it was when I came here. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'll be honest, especially in, in, in Africa yeah. and other uh, developing countries, right now there, there's a lot of awareness that's mm-hmm. coming up with mental issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I can't tell you how many lives have been lost oh, yeah. through mental health, mm-hmm. depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. Many, many lives mm-hmm. have been have, have been lost. But I see traction coming on, and we'll be talking about that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. If this way, anywhere we can help, we'll really bring that into conversation. So you're starting growing up. And you're having mental issues, mm-hmm. but you're still born again. Very born again. Uh, do you get to share that in church? Does anyone else get to know what you're going through? Or is it just personal and you're internalizing the whole process? Um, that's a good question. In church, we don't talk about things that are wrong. We only talk about everything that is going right with now us. remember my pastor, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw stones. <laughs> Yeah, so Thank growing you for up, bringing it up. Yeah. Yeah. we need to right. tighten ourselves, Pastor, yeah. and start talking about the Absolutely. thing. Oh, Absolutely. Oh no, Absolutely. we really need to Absolutely. do something. I think that is the reason why we are here. That's we are right. saying we have been preaching about the good things, but we have left out the things that are, mm-hmm. you know, issues to our children. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we are so surprised when a child comes and tells you, mm-hmm. "My me, I'm a gay," and you think I've been talking about this homosexual. <laughs> I'm just giving that example. Right. And you are thinking, how did it happen? What happened? This child has been having this, but mm. we could not hear. Right. We could not read the signs that right. something is wrong. Right. Because we are always looking at the perfection. We Absolutely. are creating the children who are perfect. And mm. yet, in their heart, we bring a lot we'll of pressure. Mm-hmm. So That's, there's a lot of things that are going through the yes, church. Yeah. And what we are doing, mm. we are burying our head under the sun and, at the sun. and assume this things are not there. Mm -hmm. Mental issues are in the church. Uh, Depression Mm -hmm. are in the church. Sexuality, people Mm -hmm. struggling with sexuality, Mm -hmm. they are in the church. Addiction of multiple drugs are in the church. Mm -hmm. And unless we speak about them, and now here's the thing, that sin is not different from any other kind of sin. Mm -hmm. But unless we know what it is and identify what it is, Mm -hmm. then we fail in how we respond to them. We trust and believe God is able to save and deliver. Mm. But that process for some is different. For instance, if someone has been an alcoholic, some of them takes time to go through that time. Mm. If someone has been an alcoholic, it's, it's a process. So unless we identify those issues and either have a pastoral counsel or a counseling situation in the church, someone who is totally trained to deal with those. The problem is it comes with shame. Right. and guilt. Because as a pastor, I wouldn't want to unveil and tell the world that, that my son mm. is an addict mm. or is addicted to cocaine or heroin. Yeah. You know? So, so we because we are, that. yeah, we cover that. And before we realize a child has committed suicide, because yeah. we as pastors, we, we are looking at, we are role model in the church. We are also having a lot of pressure because as pastors That's right. in particular, That's because right. if maybe I fall down and go into adultery. I'm going to, they, I mean, the whole community might take stones and start hitting at me because they think that a pastor is not supposed mm. to do that. We are being judged more. Maybe right. that is why we are also judging our children more. more because wow. we, we forget that we are also human beings who That's can right. fall somehow. And our God is a God that can restore us. So mm. we judge us too much sometimes. Mm. And we take ourselves up out of the issues right. of life, the right. mental problems in particular. Mm. A pastor is not supposed to be seen with, a pastor's kid must not supposed mm. to behave in this way. So, so we have raised a bar. Yes. And the problem with that, 
we don't really show the struggles that we went through. I'm mm. not sure where you guys are coming from, but I come from a place where mm. every of my friends dad will tell us, when I, was in, when I was in your age in school, I used to be number one. And now we, <laughs> when we meet together, we're always asking, so who was number last in their group? Because everyone, when we meet, they're always telling us, they're always number one. my dad's yeah. telling me, you know, in your age, I used to be number one in class. It's oh like, wait a minute, God. all these people are telling us. They don't talk the about their that, failures. They don't talk yeah. about failures. And you see, when you don't show people your scar, mm -hmm. you can't show them your victory. Mm -hmm. You have to show them the struggle that you went through so that they can relate because at times when they go through that then they think they're, they're awkward yeah. they think they're out of place mm -hmm. yeah. but when they can relate mm -hmm. then they know these are real struggles mm -hmm. that's why Paul he writes that I watch, follow my step as I follow Christ mm -hmm. and he's not ashamed about showing his scars mm -hmm. yeah. Paul tells us about areas of struggle mm -hmm. he says what a wrecked man I am I, am. I struggle all the time yeah. the good things that I want to do and other I'm things that I want to do yeah. and the, the <laughs> things that I, he's showing us an area in his life that he's human mm -hmm. he's struggling yeah. but most of the time we hide that yeah. and part of that is when them that are looking to us and our children mm -hmm. they see a perfect person yeah. and when they walk in, perfe in perfection yeah. they feel so terrible because they cannot t uh, relate with how you can be so perfect when they're not yeah. but when we show our struggle then they're able to relate and say wow it makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to make it. Yeah. And I'm glad that you're bringing it up. Mm -hmm. So now you're coming in a place where you cannot even talk about those in I church. I cannot, yeah. Oh. But I have to say, I thank God for my dad. Uh -huh. My dad, before he became a pastor, he had really gone through the world. Right. And my dad will talk. <laughs> he will say it. You right. know, mm. he, he knows he's not perfect. Uh -huh. He will vocalize it. Mm. And having an, an understanding that dad like my dad mm. saved me some of that pressure. Okay. okay. Yes, because... It, but that was not not when I needed it. I came to understand it later, well, and it made me feel better when now he talked about it. Mm. But now when I look at it, when my parent tells me, you know, I went through one, two, three, four, five, I see the human in them, not the perfect in them. Mm. Right, you know, right. it, it's when my mom shares things that she never talked about that mm. makes me see her in a different light. Not mm. the person who's always having his her arm on top of me ready to tell me move mm. move move now i see mm. my mom mm. as a human wow. you know and wow. that is that changes my whole mentality it really right. does right. yeah no that's needed I'm, and yeah. i'm glad that they are opening up and becoming vulnerable yeah. mm. so you can see not only their victories and their gains mm -hmm. but you can also see the pain yes yeah. because you cannot celebrate a victory without understanding what the process is yeah that's correct you know so you're able to put yourself mm. in that place yes. so you continue now you're having a mental issue you are struggling the anxiety mm -hmm. you're still born again, still born again yes. <laughs> so where does that lead you into now uh like being born again and everything now you're you're born again you're struggling with anxiety you're having all these kind of issues going on so how how do you find your placement in life oh it took it took me a while to find my placement in life i, I learned the art of holding it in Mm -hmm. uh, I learned how to deal with, not really deal with it, just deal with it, quote unquote. Just numb it. Yeah, just, yeah, you better be okay. Nobody's going to check up on you. Oh, mm. Yeah, so I learned how to live with it and go past it. But it really affected my life. I, I was moving I around imagine. a lot. Mm. I didn't know how to relate with people. People just knew me as the sickling. First of all, why are you a sickling and you're in CU? This God mm. evidently isn't working for you, mm. you know? And it affected my my work, my studies. I couldn't. I, I wasn't that. in school, so I wasn't. I didn't have time to perform. Right. And I remember this a girl we used to serve together. She called me and she told me, you know, the Lord really loves to give you messages to because I used to preach. Mm. The Lord really loves you to give you messages to preach to us in school. So I know as much as He has cast you in your education. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that God will still use broken vessels, right? <laughs> but now she brings up a good point, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> How natural is it uh, after you've been so used to a particular situation, especially if it's anxiety and all that, mm. and you've been labeled a particular way? How natural is it for you to numb it and say, this is my situation, this is my condition, I'm going to take it and I don't need any more help? We always numb it, especially when you are a Christian. Right. Because you don't want people to see the other side mm. of you. Right. So um, it, it, it's, it's a tough, tough, tough situation. That Otherwise, if people were not uh, you know, putting it or hiding it under the carpet, mm. then a lot of people could be able to get a, um, help earlier right. than before their mental issues. You mm. know, like 
is blown out. Mm. So if people are having that, that's why we are here today to say, if you have issues, go right. and hide. Right. Just seek for early, um, you know, early treatment because anxiety, uh, panic attacks, you name it. If mm. you get help earlier, mm. then avoid, you know, talk to people about it. Right. You'll be able to be helped. Right. Because people, you people will say, I have been there. Mm. Now I am here, but I have been there. That's I right. understand your situation. That's so right. come, mm. you know. That's why there's that invitation when mm. God says, come, come, to, come me. to me. Those yeah. who are heavy laden, yeah. I will give you rest. And That's I'm true. going to ask you maybe to clarify what CU is. I'm from Botswana. I don't know what oh. CU is. Because in my country, it will be SU, Scripture Unit. Oh. So in your country, I don't know CU, what CU is. Christian Union. That's Christian Union. Christian <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't want to to believe that is Christian union, baby, because somebody will be there and not knowing yeah. what it is. Thank you for clarity. Yeah, it's a, sure. it's, a, it's an organization of Christian students in a school. You know, in our as we used to call it, Scripture Union. Oh, Scripture mm. Union. Yeah, oh, that's even better. You. Yes, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm seeing now, Kate, mm -hmm. and, and and this is one of the things that people would want to know. Yeah where we started um, m most of the time you 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 want to numb and say this is my condition people have said this is what i'm going through this is my situation mm. i'm comfortable with it they have called me an alcoholic i'm okay mm -hmm. i'm an alcoholic they have called me a drug addict yeah i'm okay mm. i'm a drug addict they are calling me these names. I, I settle with that and I'm okay to go with it. Yeah. But I don't think that's where we should stop. Yeah. Uh, we are able to redefine our names. We are able to go beyond what they have labeled us. Yes. Mm. Uh, when Jacob was called a trickster mm. and he ran away, he behaved as a trickster. Yeah. But one time when he met with God, he totally transformed him. Mm. And he said, moving forward, you're not going to be called Jacob. But I'll give you a new name. A new I'll name. call you Israel. Yeah. Because God is able to change our identity oh, yes. and give us a name mm. and a new name. Viewers will be right back uh, in a few minutes as we continue with Kate here. Uh, digging more deep into where she started <laughs> and where she's at.
Welcome back. Uh, we are excited to be here again with Kate and Dr. Mish <laughs> talking about the processes and the journey that Kate has gone through as a pastor's kid, uh, finding her identity, her voice, and uh, the challenges and storms that she had to go through. Now, before we went on break, uh, Kate, we talked about... Uh, you being aware of who you are and finding an identity through your dad, who was able to be really vulnerable to you and tell you, these are some of the struggles that I went through mm -hmm. and being honest at some point later on. Mm -hmm. But again, as you pointed out, that came way later yeah. <laughs> after you had been through the storms and your dad's telling you, oh, I've been through those storms mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's important that we get to know uh, through that. So how is life now? You growing into a young uh, I would believe a young adult into mm -hmm. maturity and it's getting to a place I believe now you have to leave home, right? Yes. And start your own life mm -hmm. and you are grounded into salvation. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Uh, now? Then. Then, okay, yes. Right, you're grounded into salvation. So how do you deal with peer pressure and uh, all this? Around? It can be noisy and especially at your, at your age, right? Yeah. You're having... Uh, to, to perform, conform, and to be what other people want to be. Mm -hmm. It can be a, an overwhelming pressure. Yeah. How do you navigate life in that time? In that time, th I really thank God and I thank my mother. Mm. My mother had taught me to say, no, I'm a Christian. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was easy for me. And that's why I never really had a lot of people around me because mm -hmm. uh, people knew that you don't even ask Kate. She won't, she won't say yes. Mm -hmm. And they were still my friends. I never like secluded them or anything. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I have to say I did judge them. But now with wh what I've gone through, mm -hmm. I know better. Mm -hmm. right. So I will be like, no. I, I can do that. I'm a Christian. You okay. must have been. You must have been mm. a very good Christian. Uh, <laughs> not very good. I, I I was perfecting Christianity, which is impossible. You can't do it. What do you mean by perfecting Christianity? I I I just wanted to be a perfect child. You know, the Lord says He perfects us. We don't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I wanted to perfect myself. Uh, right, yes. So right. I needed to paint a picture every single time yet i was still struggling inside mm. wow yeah i still held mm. a lot i was bitter with the world because i said i grew up in poverty mm. people ne really never really helped us mm. and the reason i was smart is because i could not choose everybody pointing me out as the poor kid right. i need to be the poor smart kid right. you know? <laughs> what a combination <laughs> how do you have those two at the same time <laughs> That, that's, 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 that's better, you know? <laughs> so, right. But I was bitter. I was so bitter with this. There, we've, as Christians, we have, we have become people who weigh sin. Mm. There's this sin that is better and this is good. It's okay. Do, don't spoke gossip. Don't join them. But mm. I was bitter. Mm. I, I was angry with the world, angry with people. Mm. Did anyone know about that? No or? one. I and was this is that's the issue now. Yeah. We are having a situation where, mm. and I've seen this especially with the Wayangwins, when you meet, they will give you exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. You want someone who knows how to sing, mm -hmm. quote scriptures, behave a Christian. Mm -hmm. They will give you that version. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But when they move on on the other side, it's a totally... So they have perfected the art yeah. of giving you exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you, uh, you really exiled on that part. Oh, yeah. very well. And again, I have to say, our parents or even the society will tell us, don't smoke, don't mm. take alcohol, mm. don't become gay. Mm. I've never heard my parents tell me, don't don't let your anger lead you to sin. Don't yeah. be bitter. It's actually a kasirika. Go and, go and get angry as much as you want, you know? And then with us, right. you know your parent is going to react that way. So yeah. it's better. It's easy to swallow it and mm. keep it there. Mm. Right. And be like, okay, that's fine. Mm. And now we, I be, grew up knowing that it's okay to do this sin and it's not okay to do this mm. sin. Mm. So I'm still hurting as a Christian, quote unquote, mm. what I was pretending to be or trying to have that impression so i was still right. suffering but still we'll stand in front of the congregation and tell them oh let's shout to the lord yeah you know but i'm yeah. dying inside as well yeah. and you did I, have I, I like to... it when she says i was trying to perfect myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we really uh, try to perfect ourselves that right. is why we mask mm -hmm. a lot of uh, heart issues right. we don't talk about them so if the viewers are really listening to this we shouldn't mask mm -hmm. when you are dying inside yeah. please come out mm -hmm. and tell people that mm -hmm. i am dying mm -hmm. so that they can also help mm -hmm. you that's mm -hmm. right you know yeah. it's that is very very important mm -hmm. yeah thank mm -hmm. you so much no, that, 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 no that's, a, that, that's a good point yes. mm -hmm. because see when when, when jesus is mm -hmm. addressing people's issue yeah 
He knew what they were. Mm -hmm. For instance, when he meets the blind man, yeah. He knows that this is a blind man. Mm -hmm. When he meets the crippled, mm. he knows this person's a crippled. But mm. what was it? It's always first question. Mm. What do you want? Yeah. What do you want me to do what for you? you? To do? Because mm. he wanted that sense of ownership yeah. that comes from you gaining what you want. Mm. So uh, when we are going through all this, you don't want to, you don't want to mask it. Yeah. You want to bring it up yeah. to God. Yeah. And uh, when we try it ourselves, we'll definitely fail mm. because at our human capacity, we are built with limitations. True. We can never excel and succeed the storms of life by our own strength. No. We, we, we are born with that weakness and limitation. Mm -hmm. It's only when our reliance is with Christ and the Holy Spirit, yeah. mm. that's when now we have capacity we have capacity to overcome and to have a successful life. Yeah. If you set that aside, mm -hmm. there's no way you're going to overcome either it's an addiction, uh, whether it's a particular behavior. You can never be able to, to, to overcome that. Yeah. The only advantage that we have is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus says, do not start until you are endured, you are mm -hmm. filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit because that's an advantage mm -hmm. that we all need. Yeah. So when you run away, come back mm -hmm. and... I uh, take that advantage of the Holy Spirit yes. and the power of God Amen. to help you overcome all the challenges and the weaknesses mm -hmm. that we are. Anyone else, you remove the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it's just as weak as mm -hmm. anybody else. Yeah. So our strength comes in that dependency yeah. yes. uh, in Christ Jesus. So now you, you mask it up and you're growing and you're doing your salvation. And that sounds very familiar. Mm -hmm. That's a sound that I've heard from yeah. too many young adults. <laughs> and it's until when they grow up that they say, uh, and they, they, they open up to their parents. You didn't know I was struggling with this. You yeah. didn't know I had this challenge. Yeah. Mm. It's like, why didn't you come? It's like, you couldn't have comprehended when I came to you, right? Mm -hmm. Because even communication is, is a problem at times. Mm. And until years later, that too, when you come and discover that someone was going through some challenges and mm -hmm. difficulties in life. But for you, you decided that I'll nap it, I'll bottle it mm, up. Mm. I will not speak about it. Some others, they will go into a totally different way. Mm -hmm. So how does that take you now? How do we excel in that journey where you're not talking to anybody, you're masking it up. Mm. When you go to see you, they're seeing this lovely young girl <laughs> filled with the love of God. But mm -hmm. you're, you're dealing with bitterness deep yes. within. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's burning, it's consuming, it's eating oh, you inside yeah. out. Yes. And plus you're having mental issues at the same time. Mm -hmm. But you're able to put a facade. Yes. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> able to tell that. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. It is. It, it was is. awful. It is. And why is that? Is it because we want we don't want to be shamed? Yeah. We don't want to be... You see, in a church, you want to be seen as the spirit-filled. <laughs> mm -hmm. No one wants to be seen in a church as someone who is struggling yeah. with sin. Mm. Mm. You know, no one wants to be seen in a church Definitely. as someone struggling <laughs> with a particular weakness. Yeah. We all want to be seen as overcomers, mm. but it's robbing us an opportunity to mm. grow and amend mm -hmm. and become better. Because yeah. we're afraid us. to be judged. We're afraid of that. Mm -hmm. But God sees us. He sees deep within. Mm -hmm. He sees. He judges mm -hmm. not from a man's perspective. Most of the time you find that we're in churches, but we are deep in sin. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because that one is on his sin, just masking the things that we can bring for, uh, before the Lord. He says, no, I'll answer you. Mm -hmm. You just read uh, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. He says, just call. call. Mm -hmm. call unto just me. give me a call. Mm -hmm. and I will listen. Mm -hmm. The Lord is ready to listen to yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. Even if we are in churches, mm -hmm. and we should not allow ourselves to go deep into sin of thinking, masking, no. and uh, thinking that, I mean, it's a sin on his own not to trust That's God. Right. Yeah. That's right. So we need to be open before the Lord. We can just cry before the Lord. Get yourself, repent before the Lord and say, Lord, I am a sinner. That's right. As most of the time, we don't want to be classified as sinners. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. And should you be there as a, as a young adult? Mm -hmm. Uh, struggling in, uh, I know in this show right now we are talking about drug abuse and substance abuse, yeah. but it could be even a mental health we are touching here and anxiety mm -hmm. and uh, other conditions that are feeling, making you feel really horrible and bad about yourself and uh, you're contemplating about just isolating and being by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the best place we want to invite you is in a place where Jesus says, come unto me. Uh, even if your sins are as red as cult, come, yes. I'll make them uh, white, white as snow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extending this invitation mm -hmm. 
to you, the best place you are is at the feet of Jesus. You are better there than anywhere else. Do not allow that voice that wants to make you feel like you want to rebel, you want to be away, you want to isolate, you want to continue in a downward spiral. Don't go there. Resist that. Uh, come to find someone, find a pastor. Sure, I mean, you, you lose nothing. Forget about, I mean, what's your integrity when you're going through, you, you, you're suffering? What's, your, what's the shame when you, you know, forget about that. You are better off in Christ than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, Kate, you, you, you go through that part. Yes. And uh, now, where do you find yourself? Where do we head from there? Where do you find a voice now? I, I lose the voice. I don't find it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> How do you lose it now? So, no, you can't hide anymore. No. You no. can't fake it anymore. And no. I know. Yes. It gets to a place where now you have to call it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. So now I've completed high school. And my high school life, I had already made a pact with myself. No relationships, no nothing. Just do Christ and do right. it well. Mm -hmm. So now I was like, I've served my, my time. Now it's time you allow me to also serve whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. And now I was out in the world. I had just completed high school. I had joined a school. I joined Daystar. Mm -hmm. um, it was a short course. But mm -hmm. during the short course, and I also now started building friendships from now people who, who had already been right. outside. Mm -hmm. And I remember now, this was now the introduction of where my mind started opening up to ideas. I remember when I was going to the program, I remember Paul used to show up with clear bottles like that, but it wasn't just water. No. Uh, <laughs> and it will be passed to me, but I'll be like, yeah, not yet. But not judge it. Right. Not just not yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was a very good program. Mm -hmm. Very good. I remember they will tell us about drug abuse. This this person who came and talked to us about how he she used to smoke weed and mm -hmm. pro, pro, uh, progressed to like hard harder drugs. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the devil is such a liar. That mm -hmm. is the first day I thought, I'm going to smoke this weed. Oh. oh. Yes. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> yeah. Um. And I had seen the person really suffer. The lady didn't have her teeth from uh. drugs. But yet I said, today's the day. Wow. And I called my friend and I said, I think today is the day. Hmm. said, Ooh. yeah, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's totally it. premeditated. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You're planning up for it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. But still, I had the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, 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 I was now contemplating. Mm -hmm. Like, I? Mm. am I really sure I want to do this? Right. Then I started building reasons. You know, I'm about to go to the embassy, so they might do a drug test. Let me just not. Let me just not. Oh, at that time, you're planning to come over yes, to the US. Yes, I was. Okay. And I was afraid they will do a drug test and find mm. I had drugs. Uh, that will do remove so inhabitation is the result of what you want to do is not simply because of the fear of the lord in you at that time you know what, now that i'm mentioning <laughs> it yes <laughs> yeah <Great. laughs> okay now i got a visa appointment coming up mm -hmm. and just for adventure they try to do drug test and yeah. they want my blood to be clean mm -hmm. so i'll do it <laughs> yeah and i also started having uh, talks with my mom mm -hmm. well mom the bible jesus changed water into wine didn't you oh see you haven't tried that part mm -hmm. right. and we will argue you and she will even ask me do you want to drink i said well i'm sure i'm gonna try at some point right. thank god i became comfortable talking to my mom mm -hmm. it got to a point where i was like whether she rebukes me or not at but least you I have someone it. you can mm -hmm. talk to yes i oh. got to that point mm -hmm. and she said well i'm gonna buy you a glass we'll sit down and you'll drink as i watch i was like that is so weird <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that <laughs> first of all you never do it so why would you do so she was like yeah if you can't do it with me don't do it anywhere oh, right. you know that's a good one yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I like the relationship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keep it up, uh, mother. Uh, Whoever she is. Right. Yes. So you decide now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hold it off because mm -hmm. I got uh, an upcoming visa mm -hmm. interview. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how that would go. Yeah. So you don't, you don't, you don't. I don't do anything. You don't use drug. You don't do that. Yes. So at what time do you test it now? On the flights. Huh? You're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding me. I'm so I would like, imagine your prayer going into the embassy. But oh. God, I'm going to be a good girl. Completely. I will serve you. Yes. I will love you. Uh -huh. In that country, you're taking me. I will minister. I will, <laughs> I'll minister yeah, there. Yeah, evangelism. Trust me, God. I'll, I got this. No, don't you all do that? Don't you make all those promises <laughs> when you want something so badly mm -hmm. before the Lord? Yeah. I've heard about people who are going to into the visa into coming to this country. Mm -hmm. All the prayers that they made and the commitments that they make. Mm -hmm. You, 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 watch, at, me, you okay. watch at them right now. Oh my God. <laughs> so you go get your visa. God plays his part. Mm -hmm. Gives you a visa. Gives me two times. 
What do you mean two times? I got my visa two. I get my first time, come do whatever I have to do, go back. I get it again. Oh, you get two it for good the times. Time. Mm. Yes. So now you get into the flight, and part of what they'll give you is free wine. Yes. And you say, now God, um, give me a moment. <laughs> yeah. Let's it's just tasting. I want to know how. How does it taste? <laughs> you had never tasted never. beer before. It's your first oh time. Oh my God. Well, my mom told me I drank when I was two years. I don't remember. Uh, forget was, about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but I had never. So now on flight, coming to the US, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. offer you all the meals, of yeah. course, including mm -hmm. a drink. Yeah, what do you want to drink? I'll have the wine. You don't even know whether it's red or no. yellow or blue. Yeah, who, <laughs> what which one do you want? I guess you didn't good even one. know the name. No. <laughs> you don't even know the name. No, just give me something good. <laughs> It's called for a celebration. Uh -huh. Okay. I hated it. You hated it. I was awful. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. What made you hate it? The taste. Just didn't like the yeah, taste. Yeah, I was like, just give me juice. At least you tasted it. Yeah, and went because I was going for a camp thingy. It was a Christian camp. The Lord was still pulling me to Him because yeah. while I was going to the camp, I thought this is my time. Oh, mm -hmm. Was there a conviction after drinking it for the first time? Did it? Did. I was like, well, God, you knew this thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it. So, well, I guess now we're okay. Let's continue doing what we have to okay, do. Okay, let's yeah. continue the walk. Yeah. Okay, that's a good... Yeah. And I got the camp. It was really Christian and people have been brought to Christ. I knew I was trying to go away from Christ. So I'm wondering, guys, so come on. So how are you trying to go away from Christ? I want to experience the world. Ah, because you're a pastor's kid, you've yeah. never experienced free love, mm -hmm. and you're thinking there's something you're missing out Yeah, there. now I want to be in a relationship, I want mm -hmm. to go out with people, and now uh, here comes a camp where I'm being called to minister to children. Mm -hmm. Actually, my roommates, when I talked to her, she was like, you're really stirring something in my spirit. I'm like, I'm not even trying to. I'm not trying to stir it. I'm trying to, right. let's, let's do something new. But she was like, yeah, let's not. Mm -hmm. I remember we even went to this celebration and they were having alcohol. She was like, I, I just won't drink. Mm -hmm. Thank God for her because I also said, okay. Oh, no, we, we don't drink here. Yeah. yeah, but we took a picture with the bottle. <laughs> oh my God. We were just, you know, the devil plants seeds. It's yeah. just those small seeds, you know. Yeah. It was yeah. just the small things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the company that you surround yourself yeah. really matters a lot. Very mm -hmm. See, the Bible says, uh, mm -hmm. bad company corrupts, yes. good morals. Mm -hmm. And someone told me, show me three of your friends okay. and mm -hmm. I'll give you an average of who you really mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you're never different from mm -hmm. three of your very close friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, you, 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 you are one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by having a friend who decided this is not the path that I'll take, mm -hmm. really, I'll help to you at that time. Yeah. But I can see where you're coming from. You're coming from a place where you thought, back in my country, they call it, you're put in a, in a gate. You're, mm. you're, you're in a gated house. Mm. You never experienced mm -hmm. life outside the mm. gate. Mm. And I can see for her, she's coming in a place where now she's free. Mm. She's done with college. Mm. She wants to experience uh, totally uh, a free life yeah. after the untested Far away limit. from the parents. Far yes. away from the parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I can see now where the temptations are coming from. Mm -hmm. So you have tried up alcohol in the flight. It didn't work for you. <laughs> You're having a very accountable partner yes. who will not drink. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, there's still that temptation that's still not going away. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And remember, at one time you had even started doing weed and you decided this is going to be pushed back. Yeah. So where do you now start that indulgence? Of now, do you have to go back home and come back again, or where do you now? Yes, get I went back into? home, uh, got my visa, came back for the second time. Yes, now. for the second time. When you're home there, did you drink and smoke? No way. So you carried on your identity. <laughs> yes, home yes. is a beautiful child. Uh -huh. Okay, who yeah. doesn't do things? <laughs> who doesn't oh. do things? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the so, PK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go there, come back again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when I came back, uh, I had a friend. Yeah, and now her she used to drink properly, <laughs> and it wasn't bitter. No, it was not the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I got accustomed, and now for the first time I felt the effect of alcohol, mm -hmm. and people loved me when I was drunk. Oh. Wow, they really loved me, wow. really, and I hated it. Why are you mm -hmm. loving a version of me that I'm not mm -hmm. even comfortable with? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and also, um, I had mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. Since I grew up in poverty, we had a lady who we, my mom used to go weed for her. Mm -hmm. And she was rich, very rich, but mm -hmm. she died because of alcohol. Mm -hmm. The smell of her house never left me. Mm -hmm. So every time I drank alcohol, that smell will come back. Mm -hmm. And I will only relate it to death. Ah, to the mm -hmm. death. Right. Yeah. Right. And I wasn't about to allow alcohol to kill me the same way it killed that woman. So mm -hmm. I never really had a relationship with alcohol like that. Mm -hmm. I will just go and drink 
just to get wild with others so that they can love me mm. but not because okay. i love you so is it a sense of identity where you Kinda. really want to be conformed to Mm. Uh, to that group of people and yeah. you, you talked about that doc the mm. other day yeah. that especially at a young age when mm. we're trying to f- uh, find our identity yeah. peer pressure becomes and uh, drug abuse can become a very leading role right yeah. loneliness rejection mm. uh, the ability to interact to be part of the group mm-hmm. is the one that is leading our children mm. into this right. downfall right. so the identity crisis of teenagers is serious is yeah. not as easy as we think as yeah. parents yeah. the desire to rebel because this is where they sit together mm. they are around the table they are talking about their poverty they are talking about the strictness of their parents and they decided this is what we are going to do this mm. is where the rebellion comes from mm. yeah mm. so now because of all those things now they have lost it right. they lose the uh, the the sense of direction because mm. they said we have been oppressed they come up with so many things because <laughs> i told you they they every time they want to do something now they go to mr google mm. uncle google will tell them a lot of stuff and that's when they see their parents as oppressive right. you know mm. all these things mm. so and is, and you know we live in a world that's filled with a lot of information yeah. some, some yeah, information a lot right? of information and right now mm. it's not far away mm. just at the palm of your hand yes uh, you are loaded dun, dun, dun. with you all the information mm. and unless you are able to filter out yeah. on what is mm. uh, the right information and at that age most kids are not mm. uh, young adults are not able I'm to really you. filter out mm. into and some of those information could even be coming from very genuine and credible institutions mm. yeah. but unless you have a mindset that is able to filter that mm. it's easy to get lost in between i'm telling you because when we were growing up our parents used to filter what mm. we have to hear yeah. you wouldn't even hear about childbirth mm. you'll be told that you a child for you for somebody for a mother <laughs> to get a child they should be something 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 and now children are they know everything because yeah. now they know the secret of everything mm. that we were trying to hide from them they know kids we were not... hiding it from them because we didn't want to know about, the about it because we knew it was going to corrupt their mind mm. but right now they call it uh, they call it i mean that kind of <laughs> information that would we we with help from them right. they were thinking that all oh, the parents were trying to hide this for us we are going to unveil it mm-hmm. and yeah. once they unveil it now it brings a lot of rebellion now this they know kids are not born in the market anymore oh yes <laughs> not anymore <laughs> yeah. they know where the kids have been you and know. even their cartoons you yeah. I, i watch some you know and hollywood let's not go there <laughs> because that's another topic <laughs> because you know i have a 5 year old 6 yeah. year old mm-hmm. and at times sitting with her watching cartoons and seeing what hollywood is pushing and the yeah. narrative mm-hmm. it comes hidden in yeah. a cartoon it. but the message is very clear mm-hmm. we'll get into that and i can see now there's all that information mm-hmm. coming in and now you're struggling finding an identity yeah. you're surrounded by friends mm-hmm. some of them are drinking or smoking and all that mm-hmm. you are almost thinking you're just trying to put your head up yeah. and at some point of course you started alcohol it's not working for you mm-hmm. and it's good that you're having a very bad memory about yeah. that woman mm-hmm. but now where do you lead with that does do you stop there and say no I'm not taking alcohol and I'm resorting into something different or do you now bounce back into Christ no I don't bounce back to Christ but nice. I was still going to church I was still going I was, to church I was still mm. going to church I was actively g- trying to get a church but I had a good church where I was living mm-hmm. but after I came to Seattle that's where I stopped going to church oh. now you're all by yourself yeah okay and you're hanging around a bunch of people mm-hmm. they're drinking you're not liking the drinking yeah but, but you have to find something to socialize you cannot just sit around them it, yeah <laughs> so since they were drinking none, none of them were smoking okay that's the funny part none of them was smoking mm. so i got used to drinking okay. it was very normal i would mm. drink it was just okay but i never really liked that feeling mm. it was one of those things that my body just automatically refused mm. but i always kept forcing it and forcing it and forcing it mm. wow yes now this are very interesting we would really want to continue this conversation for someone who is for someone who is really struggling Yeah. out of peer pressure mm-hmm. someone struggling with identity someone struggling with uh, mental issues mm-hmm. if you look into that camera and talk to them what would be that one that will tell them yeah first of all you're not alone mm-hmm. just that's the biggest lie the enemy is going to tell you that you're alone in this 
you are not alone and it doesn't matter how the environment looks like it matters how you look like mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's about you it's not about me it's not mm-hmm. about whoever i will keep judging you but i can't force it to you yeah. at the end of the day life is a choice you know and the thing is god loves us the way we are i'm not even asking you to drop that weed i'm not asking you to drop that bottle i'm just asking you to accept that god loves you as you're just like the samarian woman he didn't ch- he didn't tell him to go divorce the husbands he took he, he took the lady just as he was so first of all you're not alone and you will never be alone so just have that in mind always always amen, amen. viewers we have to end it here but i want to remind you Uh, the devil would want to put you very far away from God. Yeah. But the best place you'd want to come mm. is at the feet of Christ. Amen. Uh, we started off by reading Jeremiah chapter 33. And verse 2 and 3 talks about mm. God knowing us. Mm. And part of him knowing us, he would want to bring us back. We were created. We were mm. created to become worshippers of God. Amen. And we were created to become dependent on God. of God. Any time we become independent of him, we are giving a vacuum for the enemy to start using and not even using abusing abusing what God has created. There's so much beauty in all of us as humans and that beauty can only be achieved when Christ is in us because he knows who we are. I open this up to you. Please come back to Christ. Mm-hmm. Please come back to him. Mm-hmm. You're better and safe in Christ. And Uh, if it's a family member or someone else never quit praying for that person yes. the bible says the prayers of a righteous man mm. availeth much mm. and they are able to break every stronghold whatever mm. it is that's tying them up yes. whatever burden that's holding them up yeah. there's no burden that prayer cannot break mm-hmm. we pray for you today and hope it goes well we'll pray for you mm-hmm. dear lord we thank you It's our prayer today. Yes. Uh, through your petition and uh, plea calling mm-hmm. us dear Father, I pray, should there be someone struggling with yes. either substance abuse, yes. alcoholism, sense of identity, depression, mm-hmm. anxiety, oh God, mm-hmm. I send a word of healing today in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I pray, oh God, you will loosen every shackle. I pray, oh God, you will set them free. from every affliction of the enemy in the name of Jesus I call them by their name I declare Jehovah Lord you who have set us free we are free indeed I break every bondage of alcoholism every addiction oh lord of pornography addiction of substance addiction of any kind I break it loose in the name of Jesus I declare freedom freedom that comes from you king of glory father i pray for anyone who has lost a sense of identity give them a name give them a voice oh lord just like the prodigal son may they come back to their senses and understand that they are better off at their father's feet let them come back let there be a deep conviction that will not push them away but bring them back to you in the name of jesus we call our sons back to you we call our daughters back to you we call our brothers back to you Yes. We call our sisters back yes. to you. We call our parents back yes. to you. Alcohol will not destroy yes. them. Yes. Abuse will not destroy yes. them. Yes. Lord, we give them a sense of identity in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Thank you. Walk in the identity of Jesus and we are looking forward to see you next time as we continue this conversation here in Jesus name. Shalom and shalom.